Hello everyone, welcome back. Today is lecture 16th and in today's lecture we are going to discuss uh, what we have started yesterday. In the previous class, uh, we will look at the molecular adsorbate. So, you had already just uh, have a look at a quick look at the molecular adsorbate, but today we are going to uh, discuss a little bit more in detail and then we will also try to see uh, how to form the molecular art layer, the strategies that you need to um, involve in, in, in forming molecular art layer and so on, because you will find that the formation of molecular art layer is clearly different from that of the atomic adsorbates on surfaces. So, therefore, uh, one need to plan a bit more uh, in this case and then one need to strategize um, uh, additional factors that was not present in the case of atomic adsorbate. So, that is what we are going to look uh, uh, in this case. Um, let me just um, quickly go through what we have done in the previous class. So, we just said that it is going to be an organic molecular beam epitaxy that we use and typically it is like uh, evaporation or e-beam evaporation both method can be applied or I have also told that we can use something like an electro spray evaporation for the uh, preparation of molecular art layer. Uh, I will also show you an example from the preparation from solution because that is also like a very economic method in preparing molecular art layers, uh, though not very clean as the one you prepare from the uh, vacuum deposition or from simple evaporation technique. Um, we had also had a look at uh, the, the preparation uh, in a greater detail, so we have already seen that uh, one need to, to think about. Uh, different type of functional groups. For example, uh, SH group is a, a popular functional group uh, or you can use um, carboxylic group or aldehyde group or you can use NH2. Um, a different type of functional group need to be on the molecule in order to form these kind of art layer as you see here where uh, a kind of um, strong chemical interaction is induced between the um, functional group, these kind of functional group and that is what is getting finally interacting with the surface and then the side chain you can choose um, as you like or as the requirement for example. Uh, one can use this methodology, so this is actually something called um, a deposition directly from the solution which is a very popular method uh, people use. So, in my lecture, I am not going to go into greater detail of this type of preparation, but I nonetheless I want to just mention this type of preparation because you would also have an awareness that this is also one of the methodology that you can use in preparing um, a molecular adsorbate on surfaces. So, we will be concentrating on the vacuum evaporated uh, molecular films and also molecular films that are prepared at a from uh, a solution, but in a solid state, not uh, greater details about this particular uh, type of molecular art layer. Good. Now, let me just show you uh, how to prepare an organic um, uh, art layer or molecular art layer on surface. So, what we need is an ultra high vacuum chamber. So, that is something I have already told you uh, that we are going to prepare uh, everything using an evaporation technique. So, we really need um, uh, the the vacuum chamber. Now, the point is exactly like we have seen in the in the case of atomic adsorbates, here also you are going to use something like this that is actually the Knudsen cell, uh, which is either a, a ceramic crucible or you could also use um, a, a metallic crucible, but the metal should be actually more inert um, at the uh, uh, moderate temperature range. Uh, and then you can use like molybdenum is actually a favorite choice because um, their reactivity is very poor at normal conditions. So, if you have this, uh, then what you need is a temperature controller. So, that would basically kind of um, adjust the temperature of this Knudsen cell and uh, when the temperature of the Knudsen cell reach actually the temperature of the sublimation of the molecule, then what you create is actually a molecular beam. So, this is actually the molecular beam. Uh, and as I have uh, told you in the previous case, you basically just create a beam which is a diverging beam normally because you have a kind of small opening here and through that molecular beam is coming. And the most important thing and that is the reason why you call it molecular beam is that the molecules are coming one by one. So, this is quite important in the molecular beam epitaxy 
um, be it uh, atomic adsorbates or be it organic molecules, it is quite important that you generate the molecular beam that the molecules are actually just coming separately. And um, once you deposit the molecules on the surface, uh, the molecules, um, so the, once you have the surface and then now the adsorbates are looking slightly different, let's call it with a shape. So let's say like I have a cross shaped um, uh, molecules that is uh, getting adsorbed on the surface and then they start to move around on the surface randomly and then finally they start to form some kind of a cluster and then that cluster grows further and further and then you form the island and that's actually the general principle or general scheme of any sort of um, 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 ad, um, ad layer formation so where the the impending first uh, uh, molecular or atomic adsorbates first would land on the surface, then they would move around on the surface and then finally they kind of come together and form a stable ad layer. Now the, you will actually just see that uh, the, the things that controls the molecular assembly or molecular ad layers on the surface is, is slightly different um, from that of the, the atomic adsorbates. The reason is because you see here there is a shape associated with a molecule. So I have, for example, here depicted a molecule with a square. You can also have a molecule which is just looking like a, a, a triangle or you can actually have a molecule which is looking like a hexagon and so on. So different shapes would appear and that shape is also going to play a major role and also because the molecule itself is much, much larger in size than an atomic adsorbates, things are actually quite different. Nonetheless, let's actually look at the most important parameters to, to, to actually just do this evaporation. So you need to have, of course, a highly purified uh, material, organic molecule to be present in the Knudsen cell. So that's actually very, very important. Um, and then the molecule should also be like sublimable. So this is actually another requirement. The molecule should be sublimable, should not actually degrade with the temperature or should not melt within the ultra high vacuum chamber. So these are actually two important conditions to be satisfied. And then the pressure in the chamber, the temperature at which you evaporate and also the rate of evaporation that's also very important. And you can control all these parameters nowadays very precisely. And if you precisely control these parameters, you can actually form uh, a beautiful hard layer of molecules. Now we look into some of the examples and we'll try to understand. So let us look at a nice example of a molecular ad layer. So I have to just remove this uh, molecular ad layer. So this is actually um, a molecular ad layer on the surface of graphite 10001 uh, surface. And the molecule is actually nothing but a thalocyanin molecule. So thalocyanin molecule where you have here nitrogen atoms and uh, you have here carbon atoms um, and then you have here hydrogen atoms. So this is actually a molecule which is having a cross shape. Yeah? And now the molecule when you deposit on the surface, what you would find that the molecules comes together and form a nice island. Now let us look into the details here. Each of this point or each of this different piece here, what you are seeing is nothing but a molecule. You can see it has actually uh, a cross shape. You can also mark it using a cross. You can see these are actually different molecules that is adsorbing on the surface. And now what happens is actually the molecules when they adsorb, they actually just go around and then basically just assemble together. So in the case of molecular ad layer, you call it that they self-assemble on surface. So this is not triggered by anything. It is basically just controlled by a certain parameters. We look into that in, in greater detail. So using these certain parameters, a molecule itself would assemble on the surface and form this kind of beautiful pattern. Yeah? So this is of course um, done using an organic molecular beam epitaxy inside a high vacuum chamber. The molecule is actually a metal thalocyanin molecule, palladium thalocyanin adsorbed on graphite 0001 surface. And the image that you are seeing is actually a low temperature scanning tunneling micrograph image. Yeah? So the low temperature is very important and uh, that is also the reason why the images are looking extremely nice and, and highly resolved. 
at room temperature you cannot achieve this kind of uh, high resolution that is the reason why these molecules are imaged at low temperature that is just the uh, technique itself we will look that um, in greater detail in, in the upcoming lectures and now what you find is that the molecules are nicely arranging so you can see this is actually an, a lattice of a molecule this is another lattice of a molecule and you can see that the molecules are arranging in a fourfold symmetric manner on the surface and you also see partly that this uh, symmetry of the molecule is also kind of fourfold symmetric yeah so that symmetry is basically implemented also in the final assembly uh, of the of the of the molecular add layer that you have formed on the graphite 0001 surface so as we have already seen that the graphite 0001 surface is actually a six fold symmetric surface yeah uh, so that means the graphite is not really playing a role if you recollect before if everything is controlled now by the molecule molecule interaction we'll look into that in greater detail then the graphite is not really playing a role and you directly see that the outcome or the add layer itself is basically uh, controlled by the molecule molecule interaction that's what the reason why you see this um, well ordered pattern and as i told you if you maintain all those critical parameters you can cleanly form this film and this is actually a single monolayer film and now we can deposit more and more molecule on top of it and then you can create a thick uh, a thin film ideally of many 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 layers of molecules yeah so that's what uh, one can basically just do now just to to make you convinced that we can do it with other molecules too so this is another molecule the name is given here and this is actually a threefold symmetric molecule yeah again here the uh, the blue is representing the nitrogen and this is carbon and here we have hydrogen yeah so that's a threefold symmetric molecule it's not important what exactly the molecule is but what is important is that when you look at the uh, the at molecular lattice so let me just uh, show you that this is actually uh, a single molecule um, that you can recognize and you also see that the molecular shape is also somewhat threefold symmetric yeah and also the surface itself you can see this is one of the lattice of the molecule add layer and this is another lattice of the molecular add layer and this is another lattice of the molecular add layer and you see that is actually kind of a six fold symmetric um, surface a six fold symmetric add layer and this is of course done on gold 111 surface and using OMBD uh, OMBE so that's the organic molecular beam epitaxy and the imaging is done at low temperature scanning tunneling microscopy yeah and that's also the reason why you can clearly see a lot of interesting details about the molecule itself so you can see here three lobes here another three lobes and that basically form the molecule itself so we will definitely understand why we can image the molecule like that in in the upcoming lectures when we look at uh, scanning tunneling micrography but here at the moment you have to keep it in mind that you can image uh, a molecule at its molecular resolution and uh, to understand the self assembly of the molecule uh, this is uh, a, a practically uh, very good um, technique the scanning tunneling microscopy but what you see is again uh, a uniform defect free nice add layer of molecule on the gold 111 surface uh, this is again a single mono layer but you can deposit more molecule on top and you can create basically uh, a thin film of of such molecules now i also want to show you um, uh, the preparation performed uh, in solution so the question of, of of course comes actually whether we can only make things in in an ultra high vacuum chamber no this is absolutely not the case we can also prepare beautiful thin films also from in ambient conditions and particularly this film what you are seeing here is actually an azobenzene molecule with a carboxylic group again here we have the nitrogen we have the carbon we have here hydrogen and we have here oxygen so this is basically a cooh group a carboxylic functional group and the molecules are basically dissolved in a solution so the solution of methanol so you dissolve the molecules in methanol and then prepare a very dilute solution of uh, of molecule in methanol and then you simply drop cast them on graphite 0001 surface 
Then what happens? You see that nicely they form a well-ordered uh, art layer, but the resolution of the image is not that good quality as uh, in the previous case because these images are actually performed using room temperature scanning tunneling micrograph. There the quality is not as great as in the low temperature STM because naturally there is this uh, thermal noise existing in this case. Now, uh, nonetheless, uh, by doing some kind of uh, averaging technique, you can clearly see what is a molecule. So, you can see here molecules are looking like uh, linear uh, bright contrast. These are each of this molecule and you can also somewhat see the, the length of the molecule and, and with that you can basically understand the, how the molecules are arranging on the surface and, and things like that. But uh, what I want to show you here is that you can also here using the, the solution base preparation, you can also form nicely uh, single monolayer or depending on the concentration of the solution that you use for the solid, um, for the um, uh, preparation, you can also basically just prepare layer by layer on top of each other and then you can basically form multi-layer and you can form thin film nicely. Well, um, there is always a question of solvent getting trapped within this because uh, we do not really image the, the solvent molecule itself. So, there is always a negotiation about the quality of the films that are prepared um, uh, from solutions and, and that is also the reason why uh, in, in many a times people do um, prepare things uh, by evaporation technique or in, in high vacuum so that the purity of the film is very high. However, one can actually after preparing the film you can actually anneal the surface and then try to evaporate all the solvent because you can see the, the solvent used here is, is methanol and uh, you can actually uh, evaporate the methanol from the film if there is some traces present uh, by annealing gently the, the surface after the deposition. Yeah? So, certain parameters need to be actually controlled within this particular case and then you can also prepare high quality uh, thin films of molecules using solution based preparation. Now, you have already seen uh, nice examples and also examples where we prepare things from uh, uh, in inside ultra high vacuum chamber or using uh, solution preparation. Now, the question basically is that what are the things which is controlling basically these kind of molecular R layer? Can we use the same type of understanding as we have done in the case of atomic adsorbates on surface? Well, the answer is yes and no. It is partly yes and no. Uh, the, the, the important thing here, when it comes to molecule, as you directly see in this particular molecule, there is a shape associated to the molecule. There are not one atom present in the molecule. There are more atoms present in the molecule. Therefore, one need to consider all the interactions that are present in the molecule between different atoms of one molecule to the other and also each atoms how they interact with the surface. Yeah? So, these are the two important components. So, therefore, generally we can call it everything is controlled by something known as molecule-molecule interaction and molecule surface interaction. It is exactly the same as in the atomic adsorbates like atom, atom adsorb or adsorbate, adsorbate interaction and the adsorbate surface interaction. Similarly, here it is basically the molecule, molecule interaction and the molecule surface interaction. But there is much more complexity associated in this case which also having a certain shape and symmetry. So, therefore, the molecule, molecule interaction is a bit more complex than just simply the adsorbate, adsorbate uh, interaction because they were just two um, dots, right? Now, let us have a look at the typical molecule, molecule interactions that leads to the formation of this very nice well-ordered patterns of molecules. Well, the major interactions are all non-covalent in nature. So, that is the interesting and the first and foremost important uh, aspect here. In the case of atomic adsorbates, these interactions were in many cases or in most cases it was basically some kind of a covalent or strong ionic interactions. But in this kind of uh, uh, molecular adsorbates, the interactions are, interactions could be ionic in nature, but it is not necessarily like two point charges interacting to each other. So, this is basically some kind of an uh, ion dipole interaction or dipole dipole interaction and so on yeah 
because the molecule itself is actually much more complex uh, uh, from the point of view of its number of uh, atoms present, the type of atoms present and also the shape. Yeah? So, typically you can call the first uh, and foremost interaction is basically the electrostatic interaction and the electrostatic interactions if you look at the potential energy of the interaction, they are strongly distance dependent and as you make the, the, uh, the poles more complex that means dipole or, or monopole uh, or, or quadrupole and, and then so on, as you make the poles more, more complex then the distance dependent is be becoming more complex, therefore everything is going to be controlled by the distance between the two molecules. Then you have another and very important interaction which is known as a hydrogen bonding interaction and that hydrogen bonding interaction is a type of interaction that you would find in water molecule which is not really a covalent interaction, it is basically a non-covalent interaction. However, the interactions are ionic in nature where you have a a partially positively charged proton um, and a partially negative charged oxygen is basically interacting between the adjacent two molecules which is leading to the leading to a strong non-covalent interaction namely known as hydrogen bonding interaction. Then you have like many several interactions um, which are known like cation pi interaction, pi pi interaction, so van der Waals interaction which is a a ubiquitous interaction which is present everywhere um, which is actually having a strong distance dependence of, um, uh, of, of uh, d raised to minus 6 and then you also have hydrophobic interaction, chelating effect, many many such interesting uh, interactions are actually present that is typically what is going to control the, the molecule molecule interaction and that itself is the reason why it is not as clear and straightforward as in the atomic uh, adsorbates here. So one need to consider basically many important interactions that could be possibly happening between the molecule and molecule before you start basically depositing them or before you started basically preparing the molecular R layer itself. So that is uh, something quite important. But some good message here is actually there, there was a famous um, uh, people like Cham, uh, Jean-Marie Lane and Pedersen who are actually three people who strategized uh, uh, the so-called molecular self-assembly uh, by carefully controlling the interactions between the molecules and they actually just call it as supramolecular chemistry or supramolecular physics or supramolecular biology is already existing in nature and we can basically by looking at uh, animate system one can actually strategize uh, this sort of interactions between the molecules and one can make use of this strategy to finally control the non-covalent interaction. So that is the most important part. If you would simply take two molecules and put it on the surface, they would self-assemble. You do not have a control. So they would self-assemble, that is itself the name suggests self-assemble and you do not have a control. So therefore, it is very important by learning it from the animate systems and using something known as molecular recognition and selectivity, one can basically control the non-covalent interactions and once you control uh, the non-covalent interactions, then you can call that we can do something known as supramolecular engineering which is like you take two molecules and actually uh, make the molecule in such a way that they can actually assemble in the way we want. That is the most important part which is meaning that you have actually a greater control on the molecule molecule interaction or you can basically trigger or, or externally control the molecule molecule interaction. And that is what these three people have uh, strategized and they won the Nobel Prize in chemistry in 1987 and one can have a look at this book which is written by one of the other, one of the Nobel laureate uh, himself, uh, Jean Marilene uh, and he has actually just written his book about um, supramolecular chemistry which is actually something which is beyond chemistry. Yeah? In a normal chemistry lab what you do is you take two atoms, put them together and form a molecule. But now what we do is we take two molecules and we try to build structures out of, of molecule. Well, nature has already done it for several millions of years and that itself is why 
we are all living because everything on our body is basically controlled by the supramolecular interaction. But now we actually just inspire by this animated system, do strategize different type of molecular interaction and then control this non-covalent interactions and finally we make something called a supramolecular engineer. Now, um, what is the key of the supramolecular engineering? So, that is uh, quite an important thing to, to consider here. Of course, everything is going to be non-covalent interactions here. So, the no since it is non-covalent in nature, one can basically say that these interactions are dynamic in nature. If you would form basically a carbon-carbon bond, it is hard to break them. You need to basically supply a lot of energy to break it or if you make a a hydrogen molecule itself, you need a lot of energy to break it. But in the non-covalent interactions based supramolecular structures, everything is controlled basically by non-covalent interactions. So, if it is non-covalent interactions, the interesting thing is that they are dynamic in nature and also they are reversible in nature. So, that means if you form something, you can simply unform the same thing. Now, what you do? is you take a molecular uh, species and you take another molecular species, but the most important thing, the shape of each of this molecule must match in a way that you have something called a Hoskes complex or something like a key and lock method. Uh, only a single key would fit inside a lock. Similarly, you can see if I would take a molecule which is having some shape like C, then only this is the fitting molecule. No other shape like this, this shape or this shape or this shape or any of the shape is not going to fit. Although in this case it is actually or circular, you can see since the size of the circle is small, this is also not going to fit. So, the only thing which is fitting is actually the one which is having the right size and the shape. So, if they are fitting, then they would selectively and that is what the selectivity in fact selectively come together and they form something known as this Hostkes complex. Yeah? That is a simple strategy of supramolecular architecture or a supramolecular engineering and once you do that strategically, you can in fact prepare nice self-assembly, a controlled self-assembly you can do. Now, one more interesting thing is you would ask a question, well, if the interactions are weak, non-covalent interactions, then what actually makes them strong? Look at the molecule DNA, that is a molecule of life. Even DNA, the entire molecule is actually constructed by hydrogen bonding, weak interaction. But the interesting aspect in this case is that since you have many, many, many interactions coming together, as you see here in a DNA molecule, you have not just one interactions that is stabilizing a DNA molecule, you have millions and millions of weak interactions coming together, then you see there will be a strength. So, it is simply an example here I have cited that is the Gulliver who is actually a traveler. Uh, this is actually from the book of Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travel and you can see basically that Gulliver is a giant who is actually constrained by many, many threats by adding many, many threads over the giant, you can basically even constrain a giant. So, of course, that is a strategy that nature uses. Nature basically just built all its important molecules or the molecule of life itself by connecting them through many, many, many tiny interactions. And now, when you put all these interactions together, you have something known as a cooperative T concept and then you can basically uh, have a very strong uh, interaction uh, or you can basically build up the strength of the interactions. Um, now, that is the, the key concept and now if you would basically just consider this that okay, let us use many, many weak interactions together and you also just have a, a clear understanding about what type of interactions to use and what type of shape of the molecule and what type of fitting need to be used then one can strategize nicely and then you can basically do the supramolecular uh, engineering and, and that would give us a chance to basically build up or, or to, to form an add layer of our choice or add layer of our interest. Yeah? And that is what is uh, basically happening. 
Now, what we are going to do is we will basically look at a, a few examples and try to, to understand how people use these kind of strategies in, in making the uh, ad layer more conceptually correct or how do you conceptually realize these kind of ad layers on the uh, surface of different, um, a different type of materials. Well, let me just show you a few examples. So, this is an actually an example where hydrogen bonding is what is used. Yeah, uh, and the molecule is very simple. So, the molecule is 135 tricarboxylic benzene. So, you have the benzene in the middle and then you have 3 COOH group. Now, using the 3 COOH group, the interesting aspect is that if you deposit this molecule on the surface, now you can find there are two different type of patterns looking. So, this is quite interesting, right? In the case of atomic adsorbates, whenever you deposit the atom, at a given experimental condition, you were typically forming one type of um, ad layer, but of course, you can control a little bit further using the, using the coverage of the atoms that you deposit, but here the coverage is also the same. Nonetheless, they have actually just forming two or the STM image itself. So, the images are basically STM images. The STM images are revealing two different type of, of, um, of of molecular contrast. What are they? So, ideally this is basically one molecule. So, these corners are basically just one molecule. So, you can say each of this corner is actually a TMA molecule. But in the other case, it is slightly different. Here I have TMA molecules. Yeah, Here I have TMA molecule. Now, you would find that immediately the way the molecules in the second structure is actually much more different than the way the first structure looking like. So, I am just going to call this structure as chicken wire structure and this structure as flower structure. Yeah, these are the two different names. You can of course, get more details in this paper. Uh, please try to, to read this paper. It is an open access paper. So, you can basically just uh, uh, get the details. And now, you see depending on the way the molecules are arranging, I am actually just getting a completely different type of assembly of the molecules. So, what is the key reason behind it? Of course, um, this is a model and this one um, is one of the hexagon as you would find here. So, this is basically one of the hexagon and each of this corner is basically a TMA molecule. So, similarly, you can see I have a hexagon here and each of this corner is a TMA molecule. Yeah? So, you would basically say that this TMA molecule correspond to a TMA molecule in the structure. Now, what you find is that the TMA molecules are interacting through a hydrogen bonding between the carboxylic group. And the carboxylic group, it has actually an OH group. Therefore, you have a partially charged positive a partially charged hydrogen atom and a partially charged um, oxygen atom and they can basically form a hydrogen bonding. Now, um, the hydrogen bonding is basically there and what, what happens is that the molecules are now forming a hexagon by forming some kind of a dimer between the molecules. But in this case, what you find is that the molecules are actually connecting together and forming some kind of a trimer. So, now the building block of this pattern, the so called flower pattern is a trimer, is a trimer and the building block of the chicken wire pattern is a dimer. So, now the important thing here, although both patterns are controlled by hydrogen bonding, depending on the type of interaction or the number of molecules interacting, you would find that they are basically just forming. Uh, different type of self-assembly. Yeah. Well, uh, with this, I like to conclude this lecture, and then we are going to uh, to start uh, continuing uh, understanding uh, further examples in the in the next lecture. Thank you very much for your attention.